All right, so we're gonna do just seven and eight today, and then we'll be done with lessons for the week, and then we're just gonna go over practice test one on so we're Thursday. Just two, lessons? two lessons, and we're done. Oh, okay. my God, let's get this done. All right, let's get it done. All right, an equation. So this is algebra two, lesson seven. What? Oh, And we are going to solve linear equations. You guys remember what linear equations are? Linear. So if you had to guess on an SAT with a definition, what would you say? Equations that form a line. Yes, equations that form a line when you graph them, okay? So they are called linear equations because of that word line and the word linear. So they're, they just form a straight line when you graph them. Very good. So an equation in general is a statement which indicates two expressions are equal, okay? Or basically anything with an equal sign in it. Uh, it's a statement express, expressing, well, indicating two expressions are equal. So if you were to equate this with grammar, so see how an expression or a, a phrase is not a sentence, right? Like, um, what's an example of just a phrase? Cold outside <laughs> is, a, is a phrase. It's not a complete sentence, right? Because there's no verb. Um, I could say it is cold outside and that connects two things. So it is equal to cold outside, okay? Or the weather is cold outside, okay? So it's a, in math, two expressions are not complete sentences, but the verb in this case is the equal sign. So a good way to remember it is anything with an equal sign in it, okay? So um, it doesn't have to be true. 2 plus 3 is 5. That's true. These are still equations. 2 plus 2 equals 5. That's an equation. It's a false equation, but it's an equation. And then this one is a little different. What do you call this equation? Is that a true or false equation? It's not neither, right? Because we don't know. So do you remember what it's called? It starts with a C. Okay, so this is a true equation, a false equation. This is a conditional equation. Okay? Right? Because it depends on what A is. We can't say it's true because there's a, if the conditions are met, that A would equal, what is that? Um, five? Five? If A equals five, then the, then the equation is true. Um, then the, condi if the conditions are met. Yes, okay. So far, so good? All right, there's some uh, little funky things here. Some of the equations using algebra tiles. This is like an exploration exercise. You can do this if you want. Different way to look at these equations. I think it would probably confuse you more than help you, so I'm not gonna go over it, but you're welcome to look at it if you're brave enough. All right. So uh, usually the solution of an equation is a number, okay? So the solution is five, and it's usually a number that makes that equation true, okay? All right, and in an equation, we can use different properties. You guys are good at these properties so far. So um, remember the golden rule. What's the golden rule in life? 
Please, those are the magic words, oh, okay. I think. <laughs> treat others as yeah, you treat know. others as you want to be treated. So, and the golden rule for equations is treat the left side like you treat the right side. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other, okay? Um, whatever you do to one side, do to the other, okay? So here's some properties of equality. You don't really need to memorize these because these are things you use all the time. Um, but they make sense. So here's the addition property of equality. P O E is, and for all these, if A equals B, then dot, dot, dot. Addition property of equality says, a plus C equals B plus C. So you basically you can add the same thing to both sides of the equation and it's still equal, right? Like a balanced scale. If you add the same weight to both sides, it's gonna balance out, it's still gonna be equal. And you could probably figure out the subtraction, multiplication, Division. Okay, what's the subtraction going to be? A minus C equals B minus C. Okay, multiplication? AC equals BC. And division? A Nothing. That's all right. I don't expect you to feel uncomfortable with this yet. This is right, but it's not. You have to use that disclaimer. What's our disclaimer? It can't be zero. Right. C can't be zero. That's it. Okay. So you need to start disliking the look of this. Whenever you see a variable on the bottom of a fraction, you have to, it, it has to bother you. Okay. So you just have to use that little disclaimer. This, you're not gonna get it wrong on a test if you forget that disclaimer, unless it specifically asks for it. But just, I want you to not like that, okay? All right. So uh, these examples are pretty algebra one-ish, you know, maybe second semester pre-algebra-ish. Let's solve these, this equation using the properties of equality, okay? So your goal, remember, in algebra is to get the variable by itself, right? When you're solving an equation, you have to get, you have to get rid of everything except that variable. So you have to get rid of two things. What do you want to get rid of first? 23. The what? 23. The 23? Well, if you get rid of 23, oh, you have the then you, have, you, you want to get rid of everything on the variable side except the variable. All right, so get rid of 12 first. If 12 is being added, to get rid of stuff, you do the opposite operation. So subtract 12. Golden rule and a subtraction property of equality means whatever you subtract from one side, subtract it from the other, okay? So now you're left with negative five X on this side. What are you left with on this side? Negative 35, good job not being fooled by that. Um, all right. Okay, good, good. Now, how do you get rid of that negative 5? What's that negative 5 doing to the x? Multiplying. So how do you get rid of multiplication? Divide. Divide. And it's not 0, so that's good. So those cancel. Don't forget to divide by negative 5. Don't just divide by 5 because then you're left with a negative x. You could, but then you just have two steps instead of one step. Divide by negative five. Now apply the negative rules for division. Negative divide by negative is a what? Positive. positive, so that's positive seven. Then throw it in there, make sure it works. Negative five times positive seven is negative 35. Added to a positive 12 brings that down to a negative 23. Okay, good? All right. 
So this is this is this is definitely algebra one stuff and maybe late pre-algebra. Um, this is a little bit later in the book, but it gets so the goal remember is to get the variable by itself, so to get rid of everything on that variable side except the variable. But what happens when you have a variable on both sides of the equation? Well then you're a little schizophrenic because you're, well, which variable do I want to get rid of? Well, which var variable do I want to get rid of, get by itself? Okay, so what's our solution? What do we do? Subtract two. Yeah, you can, if, whenever you have a problem, you just get rid of it. That's not a good rule in life. You try to <laughs> fix it. But in this case, if you have variables on both sides, get rid of the most vulnerable one. Okay, take out the easy target, the smaller one. Okay, you can get rid of 6n. You can get rid of 6n by subtracting 6n from both sides, but then you'll end up with like a negative 4n, and we don't like negative <coughs> coefficients, okay? So it's not bad. It just makes it a little bit more com confusing or complex, okay? So let's get rid of the, the 2n. The 2n is... I know it looks like it's something's being subtracted, but it's not the 2n. The only thing being subtracted is the 3. So if it's not being subtracted, it means it's being added to a negative 3. So how do you get rid of addition? Subtraction. Subtraction. So we're going to get rid of 2n, not 2, because to get rid of the 2, that's being multiplied. We're getting rid of this whole term, okay? Because if there's variables on both sides that's confusing, get rid of one of them. And you can do whatever you want as long as you do it to the other side, okay? So get rid of the problem as long as you get rid of that same amount on the other side. So subtract 2n, subtract 2n. So I'm left with a negative 3 on the left side, right? Mm -hmm. And then 6n minus 2n is a nice positive 4n. Okay, now we're back to a problem like the one in example 1. So now we just have one variable to get by itself. So what do you want to get rid of first? The 25. Yeah, 25's being added, so subtract it. Whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. What are you left with? Negative 28, good. Equals 4n, now what? Divide by four, because four is being multiplied. Nice, so then you're left with negative divided by positive, which is a negative. And then do the math, 28 divided by four? Seven. Seven. All right, let's just plug it in for fun. Into our original equation, two times seven is negative seven is negative 14 minus three is negative 17. So we've got negative 17 on the left side. Let's make sure we get negative 17 over here. Six times negative seven is negative 42. What happens when you add positive 25 to negative 42? Well, that's easy math because we already know it's going to be negative 17. Okay, it works. Yeah, there you, you have no. a hand raised or are you just resting? Well, just kidding. casually, <laughs> hey, what's up? Okay, good. So far, so good? Now, um, if... The reason why we call them linear equations is not because we're going to go and graph them right now. Um, but they're linear equation because they form a line, but they're one dimensional. That means they have basically one variable in it. Okay? Um, so you will always get a nice, pretty number. You won't get a set of numbers because there's, no, there's not a second variable, but there's just one variable in it. Okay? All right, I don't have my eraser. I don't know where it went, so I've been using Kleenexes. So what's it like out there? Is it still snowing? Uh, it's it's rain. Not raining yet, still it's raining? Like Mix. Or not snowing yet. I don't think it's even raining right now. No, it is. It's kind of like a mix between like rain and snow. Sleety? Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> Yucky. That's a good word. All right. So what happens? This is usually as complicated as a linear equation gets. Okay, so now we've got variables all over the place. It's a mess. But we've got parentheses. Parentheses are the enemy of equations and the enemy of simplify, okay? Do you guys remember when we had all the steps to solving equations nicely here? I'm gonna put those up here. So if you are a steps person, then this might be good. So steps to solve equations. It's nice to have a whiteboard that doesn't do this. This has been nice, but it's it's a little smaller and a little dirtier. First step, simplify both sides of the equation first or separately. So we're not going to try to um, go cross equation, cross equal sign. We're going to simplify both sides separately first. Okay, and there's two steps to that. First step is remove parentheses. Okay, what's the solution to removing parentheses most of the time? How do you get rid of those parentheses? Distribute. So we're gonna draw little rainbows. Or what'd you call them, Avery? Hooks. Hooks. They look more like rainbows, but whatever. So 12 multiplied by R, squish it together, 12R. 12, 12 multiplied by three, 36. The parentheses are gone, now we can rest. 2R plus 10 minus 3R. The most common mistake in distributing is you forget that second one. So a lot of, you, if you're rusty, if you haven't done math in six months, you're gonna go 12R plus three. Don't do that, okay? So now we've got not quite the same situation as our last problem. We still have some cleaning up to do on the right side. What can we do on the right side to make that cleaner? Combine the two lines. Yeah, so the second part of simplifying both sides separately is combine like terms. Okay, so these this 2r and a negative 3r We'll give you negative one R or just negative R. So we're left with 12 R plus 36 equals, um, I'm gonna just say negative R plus 10. You could say 10 minus R, but subtraction is dumb and confusing and it might mess you up. All right, next step, blue step is this. If you have variables on both sides, what do you do? You eliminate the smaller one. Now, it doesn't have to be the smaller one, but I'm just going to put that. Um, I'm taking away your ability to choose by saying this, but it's a it's a smarter choice. Eliminate smaller uh, term. So this is either add or subtract because terms are either added or subtracted. So to get rid of them, you're gonna subtract or add it, okay? Now this is the case here. What's smaller, 12R or negative 1R? Negative 1R. Negative 1R, so how do you get rid of negative 1R? Add. Um, add positive 1R, whatever. I mean, there's no, I mean, you could add and um, you're adding the, uh, you could subtract a negative R right? Because the negative R is being added. So if you subtract a negative, that's actually adding a positive. Whatever it takes to get rid of it, just get rid of it, okay? So whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Those cancel. We have 13 apples plus apple is 13, or 12 apples plus apples, 13 R plus 36 equals 10. All right. And then you will get to step three, 
which is um, eliminate constant term on the variable side, not on the other side, because you don't want to put more stuff on the variable side. You want to get rid of stuff on the variable side and throw it over on the other side. Eliminate constant term on the variable side. So how do you get rid of 36? Subtract 36. 13R equals a negative 26. All right, last step. The red step. Why is it the red step? Because you have the red marker left to use. Yes, I like to destroy it with my red pen of death because it looks like blood, Kira. And like when you slash it, it looks like you're killing it. Wow. Killing it dead. <laughs> okay? Okay. <laughs> I'm thinking in a video game. Sorry. Eliminate coefficient. So coefficients are always multiplied. So how do you get rid of co the coefficient? You divide. What does step three say? Step three says eliminate constant term on variable side. I'm sorry. I should, this is going to be up here for a long time, and I should, could have made it neater. But I'm bending down and it's wobbly. You can't erase it now. I know. It's too late. I can't rewrite it. But we'll always look at this and chuckle, won't we? Okay. <laughs> eliminate coefficient. Remember, this is what the variable is being multiplied by. What variable because coefficient's kind of like a tricky word, is being multiplied by. So how do you get rid of it? You divide. So if you can remember that, you don't have to write that part down. So divide by 13, whatever you do on one side, do the other. R equals negative two, because a negative divided by a positive is negative. 26 divided by 13 is two. Right when you started murdering that coefficient, we got some vampire music. <laughs> I know. <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. I just, it, I just lose control sometimes. Okay, so now here's the deal. This whole thing, steps two through three, don't forget the golden rule. <laughs> Don't you want to just do a laugh like that? No, I'm not sure how to do it. All right, whatever you do to one side, do to the other. So if you make a change to one side, you have to make a change to the other. But you can do whatever you want to the left side. You can suck its blood. You can get rid of the constant term, whatever. Just do it to the other side. <laughs> Dude, this is like the best. I never had like theme music when I teach math before. Actually, yeah. Can you hear that? Oh my god! I don't know. They can't even hear the music. I know you can't hear the music, but it's creepy. And they're gonna be so confused. Are you going to drop this class? You're going to drop this class, aren't you? Don't do it. <laughs> I'll be normal. No, I won't. Okay. All right, so there's a couple more just uh, to make sure you're not caught off guard. We're gonna, let's do a, a, a fractional equation. Oh, no. Here we uh, go. No. So one half x plus four equals negative two thirds x plus one half. Now, you could just tough it out and figure out the common denominators and all that stuff. Still do it the way you wanna do it. You have x's on both sides, so get rid of the smaller one. Remember, any negative x is smaller than any positive. So even though 
two thirds is bigger than one half. You still wanna get rid of this because it's negative, right? So you can add two thirds X to both sides. You can do it that way and you get like five, six X plus four equals one half. Get rid of the coefficient or the constant term. And then it's like negative three and a half over here. You can still do it that way if you want. Do you want to do that? We should do it that way. But then I just don't do things in my head. Okay. I'm not smart. No, it's, it's, it's when, when it comes to fractions, nobody really does. So let's get, let's, let's do it. So there's no simplifying, right? There's no parentheses and there's no like terms on the same side. So we're done with step one. So step two is um, get rid of the smaller variable term. So can you guys agree that negative two thirds X is smaller than positive one half X? Okay, so let's get rid of that. So this is bye bye. So when I add this together, I have to get a common denominator. So this is gonna be four six plus three six, right? When you get a common denominator, so far so good. Yeah. So then we get seven six X plus four equals one half. So now we're still following those steps. So now we're on step three, which is get rid of the constant on the variable side. So get rid of four, right? Mm -hmm. So get rid of plus four by subtracting four. So you can probably do this in your head. One half of a pizza minus four pizzas. What are you left with? Three and a half. Negative three and a half, right? Yeah. So you get negative three and a half which becomes negative seven halves because we like um, improper fractions better than mixed numbers. So now this is okay. So now how do you get rid of coefficient? What do you always do? Divide, so you're dividing a fraction. How do you divide fractions? Don't you need to have a calculator? So you don't need it. Uh, you could use a fraction calculator or a calculator that has fractions and stuff. Or uh, what's the rule for, somebody said common denominator. You could do that, but then I think it's more confusing. But you can do it that if you have, if you do it that way and you're successful at it, do it. But this is just copy dot flop, right? So this is negative seven halves divided by seven six. So copy negative seven halves dot the division flop the second fraction. Okay, this is nice because this cancels. This reduces to one and three. So X equals negative three over one or just negative three. So there's nothing wrong with doing it that way. And you can, if you want. The other way is the F bomb. Uh, so you can drop an F-bomb on that and it will make it a lot easier. What's the F-bomb? What do I mean when I say F-bomb? Something about fractions. Fraction. Something about fractions. Yeah, so a fraction bomb. The fraction bomb in this case is the common denominator. And it may or may not be easier for you, but it will be when we get to rational equations. Um, you're going to need to learn this method. So we'll just practice it with this one, but there's nothing wrong with doing it this way. You're just dealing with fractions longer. This, if I do it with the F, the F bomb method, then you will, you will only have to deal with fractions in the first line, okay? Um, so there's, there's a lot of, it's the theoretical right now, but there's like chemical warfare, like you can, um, build a chemical bomb basically that will only take out people with a certain genetic code type of thing. So there's lots of fictional, not, I think Michael Crichton has like a novel like that, but, um, it's very interesting stuff, but in this case it's fractions. So it'll only take out fractions. So I'm going to multiply by the F bomb. The F bomb is the common denominator. What's the common denominator of two and three? Six. So if I multiply both sides by six, here's what happens. What's six times one half X? Can you do that in your head? Yeah, so it's one and three, so it's just three X 
plus six times four is 24. Six, so you're basically canceling the one and the, the three and the six. So that's like a one and a two, right? So then negative two times two is negative four X. Then one half times six is just three. So now you have an equation here. All I did was multiply everything by six and I've got an equation without fractions. The numbers are a little bigger, but there's no fractions, okay? We'll explore this a little bit more, but if I solve this same way, get rid of the smaller variable term first. 7x plus 24 equals three. Get rid of the constant. I'm just doing this real quick just because we already did it. 7x equals negative 21. Divide by seven, x equals negative three. So that, um, if you want to do it that way, you can. You can always do it this way on a test. You, what, which way do you want to do it on the test? Everyone's pointing over here. If you're familiar with both, you should do it both ways. Because if you get the same answer doing these really different ways, then you, you probably got the question right. Okay? Um, don't worry if that was too fast and too weird for you. We're going to explore that more. But as long as you know how to do this one of these ways, you're fine. Okay? You good? So that's lesson seven. Black math! Give me some math and I'll give you some flack! Black math!